Hey, good morning from Jerusalem times two. It's me, Karen A., your host for the Afro Euro Time Zone Rico 12 podcast. And I'm here with one of my fellows and uh, proud member of my God Squad. I hope I'm a proud member of his, that's for sure. And uh, we're here live from Jerusalem on Zoom. And we welcome you to the RICO 12 podcast. We're a self-supporting organization. I will put the info in the chat if you would like to contribute. Of course, you should go to the RICO 12 website. You could just Google, Google RICO 12. We have a bunch of recorded podcasts, different people who have shared their recovery experience, strength, and hope across multiple fellowships, many and most of them, those who draw strength from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous. And without further ado, and like I said, I'll put all the helpful hints in the chat. I'm going to introduce you to Joseph O. Joseph is going to share with us about his recovery journey, which is wild, awesome, and inspiring. I'll let him do that. And you can jot your questions in the chat as we go along. Joseph's going to share for about 20 minutes. I'll ask him some questions because I always want to learn from him. And then you all could send me your questions and we'll take them down one after another and hope to be better uh, 12 steppers and uh, better spearheads of God's everlasting creation. So welcome, Joseph O. So great to have you here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. It's and pleasure. Your Fine. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much, Karen. Uh, and uh, it's an honor to speak at a meeting of Alcoholics Anonymous. My name is Joseph Ober. I'm a recovered alcoholic. And I live in Jerusalem, <clears throat> member of the Jerusalem AA Fellowship. Um, I was not born here in Israel. I was born in New York. I went to college there. I then moved to Los Angeles all the time drinking. You know, the, the drinking experience was my solution for a while. Um, ultimately, it took me to Skid Row in Los Angeles. I, th I thought I had told you about that, Karen, but whatever, anyway. But um, but Skid Row, you know, like, I mean, I had no money. Not I had a no place car. for a nice Jewish boy, right? Yeah, no, yeah, I wasn't going to la last long there. I actually, I made I made a couple of friends. It was one guy, I consider him to be an angel, right? Everybody has this kind of experience. It was a guy, black guy named Derek. And he uh, he's the one who actually got me to rehab. I mean, well, he gave me the phone number for the rehab. He said, oh, yeah, you know, you need you need to get, re you know, you need to get sober. And I was like, what the heck is that? You know, and he was like, oh, he called his place Beit Teshuvah. So I did and crawled up the steps on February 29th, 1996. Against my will. Like, I, I mean, I don't know everybody else's experience because not everybody else, but I had no other options. Right. You know, and it wasn't the, just the drinking. It was it was my my mode of thinking, my lifestyle, my principles, my everything was out of whack. I just didn't know. So I took hold of this program and, you know, I mean, really, I, I, I've been blessed with amazing sponsorship. You know, I have five different sponsors in my life and for various reasons, I've moved on from them. One died, one got put in jail, actually. But whatever, different story, different time. But the um, but the thing is, the the quality of, of each of them was that they added something to who I am and how I view the world and um, got me into the big book, right? Um, it, it, this is, this is a big book, uh, mine's falling apart, you know, and the joke in AA is that, you know, if your big book is falling apart, your life probably isn't. And I, you know, I, I've been to zoom meetings and, um, I, you know, I take hold of this as a resource and, and fortunately or on, you know, what I've, what I've seen is a lot of confusion, uh, that, that comes out of it. I'm not here to solve the world's problems. I am not, I'm just here to tell my version of it and whoever's interested in hearing it. Like I said, you know, I, I've been blessed with people handing it to me. And so when I offer that, if if it, you know, if it sounds good to you, go with it. If, if it's not your cup of tea, don't, you know, I mean, that's that's life. But here's the thing, you know, uh, the steps as as a rule, one thing you'll notice about the steps, whoever came in here, if you suffer from alcoholism, you're in the right place. I don't just mean drinking. Alcoholism manifests itself as you know, sex addiction. Uh, could be shopping addiction, gambling, overeating, codependence, whatever it is. I spoke at a codependence anonymous meeting, you know, two days ago. And, you know, I mean, drinking got me here. Codependence got them there. You know, the sex addiction could, could get it. But the, but the fundamental thing is, in my opinion, or, you know, my experience is alcoholism, right? The, the mind, body, spirit disease 
that um, doesn't allow me to to live comfortably in my own skin. I'll actually I'll, I'll, I'll share a, a tidbit. I think it's very clever and inspired me. So a guy at the rehab that I came through, he said, um, you know, he, he he asked, so why are you guys in here? Right. And one guy said, you know, heroin addiction. Another person said, you know, I'm here for booze or whatever. And he said, well, you know, in 30 days, you're going to, the heroin's going to be out of your system. So, you know, you've been here 90 days. Why? Right. And the guy didn't know. The other person, you know, alcohol dependence. He said two weeks, he can get off of alcohol. Why are you here? Anyway, so this, so this guy says, I'm suffering from an inability to live comfortably in general society. Okay. I've repeated it. This is 27 years ago that I heard this guy speak. I've never seen him again. But the thing is, why did I remember that? Is because I suffer from that. When when I put the plug in the jug, when I'm when I'm not having a good day, I suffer from an inability to live comfortably in general society. It manifests in different behaviors. Right. At one point in my life, you know, I was binging on Netflix. Another point in my life, oh yeah, okay, I'll have myself on. I was stealing batteries from CVS, right? And and I was making one hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year. Okay. Why was I stealing batteries? Because I, I thought science should have come up with a better battery by now, and they're trying to take my money, and I don't like paying for batteries. So I'm, and my sponsor said, "Are you insane?" Right. The, the the answer is, yeah, I was at the time, but, but the truth is that uh, that's 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 what happened. So what do I need today? Okay, so that's the big reveal. That's why we're all here. What I was asked to talk about, or what I chose to share. It says, it says, God of our understanding in the big book and the steps, okay? First of all, the steps, if you read them carefully, word for word, never says you're going to stop drinking, never says you're going to stop acting out, never says anything about that. So why even do them, right? Because the, the focus is a spiritual experience. It says in step 12, having had a spiritual awakening as the result, right? Not a result. What's the difference there? What, Joseph's just word obsessed? No. The difference between the result and a result is the intended result of the steps is to catalyze a spiritual experience. When you get involved in something, you want to know where it's going. When you get into a car with somebody, you want to know where they're going, right? When you join our crew, our fellowship, you want to know what we're about and where we're headed. It's not to stop drinking. But Well, Joseph, but that's what everybody thinks. No, it's not. It's, that's not how I learned it, right? And that's why a lot of people get on these chats and they're like, I really need a meeting. I used to reply, well, you really need a program. But people people are looking for firemen today you know i, I, I oh yeah i made another mess yeah with, with my sponsees anyway because i have you know some kind of direct control over them that they want what i have i say look let's talk about how to stop putting you know how to stop getting in trouble and then you won't have to call me to put out your fires i still take their calls and stuff like that but that's the real thing so anyway the steps are designed to catalyze a spiritual experience when that happens I will stop actively drinking. I will stop acting out. I will stop getting involved in terrible relationships. I will stop obsessing about things that aren't my business, whatever it is. I've had, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm telling you that I've had a spiritual experience, but, you know, people could say anything. The, the, the facts of my life seem to indicate to me that I have been effective in following these 12 steps to the point of having a spiritual experience. I truly believe I can't, nobody can tell me I'm an alcoholic or an addict. Can't. First of all, it doesn't work. Secondly, you don't know my business, so you can't tell me. I can tell you if I'm an alcoholic, and and I can't tell you if I've had a spiritual experience. Why am I telling you that? Because a, this way, I don't have to get confused. The, the 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 people who come back at me and want me, you know, to work for them or come to parties or call me for advice or whatever, they seem to think that you know there's something different about this guy. Okay. So one confusing point, is, which I which I came to address, is it says God of our understanding. Based on what I've heard at meetings and stuff from people sharing, people are saying, oh, I can never understand God anyway. Why should I even bother? God's too big to wrap my head around. And all that is answering a question that wasn't asked. Okay, God of our understanding is understanding the relationship I have with God, a higher power, um, my, you know, my boss, so to speak. And so that's talked about on page 62. So now I'm going to read the pages, Karen. I don't know if you flash them on the screen or not. I'll read them, you know. Okay, so, it, so it, it, it's, it labels the problem, page 62. The 60s are my favorite area of the book, right? My, my friend Amanda's not on, but she like makes fun of me because she's like, you live on page 63, which, okay, fine. I, I, there's no place better to live. Um, so our troubles, our troubles we think are basically of our own making. So that's good news and bad news. Good news is that I don't have to make those mistakes again. The bad news is I got some things to clean up. But I can, you know, if, if I'm making the trouble, I can stop making the trouble. How am I going to do that? 
They arise out of ourselves. The alcoholic is an extreme example of self-will run riot. An extreme example. That means that everybody's self-will run riot. Everybody out there. I mean, like you pick up a copy of People magazine. These are these are the billionaires of the world and the most successful, and they're getting divorced and they're overdoing on drugs and their kids are, you know, all over the place. Whatever it is. I'm not saying they're bad people or evil. I'm just saying, I don't know. I don't want that life. Right? Self-will run riot. That's that's the problem. Above everything, we alcoholics must be rid of the selfishness. Selfishness was my issue, right? So the big book is the thrust is going to be to care for others, to do for others, this and that. Everybody comes in and says, I need, you know, I need some self-forgiveness. Great. Okay. You're not telling me anything I don't know. The approach is 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 what's important. If you if I approach trying to forgive myself by sitting there and trying to forgive myself, it doesn't work. I've done it, right? Spent years trying to do it trying to self-care, self-love, give to myself. It doesn't work. When I start to learn how to forgive others and care for others, the natural result is I look at myself more favorably. Okay? Now, God helped me do that. We must or it kills us. That's what it says in the book. And it, it literally means kills. And, and I mean, the thing today is this um, uh, fentanyl, right? You know, people who relapse, Right, and they go and do some fentanyl out there. This is it's happening all over the place in Los Angeles. I'm get, I get all these texts saying like, "This guy died." This uh, this, this rehab that I volunteered at. Anyway, it's a big deal. God makes that possible, and there often seems to be no way of getting rid of self without His aid. Many of us had philosophical and moral convictions galore. That means if you're trying to go to church, or you're trying to go to Tony Robbins, or you're trying to read self help books, it's not going to help if you don't have a foundation of where that's headed. And I, I'm t I also did those things, um, but we cannot live up to them, even though we would have liked. And neither could we reduce our self-centeredness much by wishing or trying on our own power. Now they're saying that they're re this is like reading their diary. They're not. They're not advising you like we thought real hard about it, and this is what we thought. They're, they're just writing. Here's what happened to us, right? So these guys, 80 years ago, are sending us a note that says, like, hey, you know what? If you if you want what we what we got, here's what we did. That's the rest of the book. But let's just read it like a diary now. We had to have God's help. Now, that's what they're saying. But I also need that. And I realized that after reading this. Now, here, here's the meat of it. God of our understanding is not understanding the totality of God. I don't understand how the internet works. Okay, I don't know how this is working right now. I you know, I use this all the time, and I have no idea the mechanics of how a cell phone works. And and I would, I would unless I got an electrical engineer on here, I would say that you don't either. But the thing is, we use it all the time, right? Same thing with God. I don't have to understand God. I have to understand the relationship. I understand how to dial a phone number, right? I understand how to click onto the internet when Karen tells me I have to log in at a certain time. I don't, I, but beyond that, I don't know. But I understand the relationship. And now the big book is going to tell me what those relationships are. This is the how and why of it, right? First, it's going to hammer why we have to do this. First of all, we had to quit playing God, right? Now, my sponsor, when I was reading this to him, I remember when I had read it for the first time, I was, we were in a car and he said, stop. What does that mean to you? And I had no answer, okay? First of all, now you guys have all read it too, right? If you've, if you've had any experience with the rooms, you, you read this line also. What does it mean to you? I'll leave it for later. It didn't work, right? That That's a good reason not to do something. Next, we had decided that in the hereafter, the drama of life, God was going to be our director. Okay, I understand what a director is. You guys, even though you're not in the show business, or maybe you are, you know what a director is, right? I'm the actor. The other person is going to tell me what, it, what to do. He is the principal, not a principal like at a school. Principal there means like a business owner, right? The, the, the you know, the founder or the um, partner, or whatever you want to call it. Um, and that we are, we are as agents, okay? That means that somebody else owns the business and I'm just out in the field, you know, acting on his behalf. He is the father. I know what a father is. Father's meant to nurture, to care for, to discipline, you know, whatever, whatever you understand a father to be, that's also. We are his children, okay? I'm his, I'm his child. And I'll tell you something that you can think about later and be mystified by, God has no grandchildren. God has no grandchildren. We all have a one, one, um, uh, DV, one, separate, one degree of separation from God, right? And he's, he's there to access us, one degree. Doesn't matter how many, parents, grandparents, whatever. Most good ideas are simple. I would agree with that. This concept was the keystone. The keystone is, you know, when you have an arch, the keystone's right here. It's the one that holds it together. That's what this is saying. Get this clear, and the rest will, will hover on that. Of the new and triumphant arch through which we walk to freedom. Okay, so here we're going to walk to freedom. We all want to be free, right? This is the arch that we can walk through. Now, here's the, here's the thing I want to have a home, and I, I 
don't know how I'm doing on time. Can I just, you know, cut me, tell me I have one minute when I have one minute, please. Okay. When we, okay. So now read this like a diary. These people, 80 years ago, I'm going to, you know, I found this book, blew off the dust and I'm reading their diary. When we, those people took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. Great. They had remarkable things. I want remarkable things. I'm going to see what, what's going on here. We had a new employer. I know what an employer is. I've, I've worked, I've worked in business. An employer is going to ask me to do something that I wouldn't normally do, and he's going to pay me money to do it or pay me compensation, whatever. You know. That's how employee-employer relationships work. So what's this relationship? Being all-powerful, right? Okay, so God's all-powerful. He provided what we needed. That's good news because I need a lot of stuff, right? If we can, And what do I got to do? If we kept close to him and performed his work well, those are the only two things. Write them down. Put them on your fridge take lipstick and put it on your your bathroom mirror right stay close to him perform his work well that's my only job today right the rest is gravy takes care of itself yeah joseph but what i've got all these things i have to worry about and there's no gas in my car and my kids don't like me no stay close to him perform his work well the rest takes care of itself okay established on such a footing again these people are writing we became less and less interested in our, uh, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. They they are reporting that they became less selfish, and that was my trouble, which it says on the on the other page. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. Really, that's going to happen for me. Yes, it happened for me. Try it; it works. Okay, and if you want if you want to have self esteem, do esteemable acts. See what you can contribute to life. I'm telling. Step out. Go up to somebody and tell them that they look nice in their dress or suit that day and see what happens you know, I, I, hopefully you won't get punched in the face but I'm, I'm telling you if you make a difference like that people will naturally like you and you'll be doing the job which i just mentioned okay more and more they became interested in seeing what they contribute to life they felt new power flow in again anybody who's sitting in an apartment okay you have appliances great they're all useful coffee maker refrigerator how effective are they without power not at all Okay. Same thing with me. I'm a body, I'm a mind. I'm, you know, I can make stuff happen. I'm not effective without power. Now this is telling me how to get power. They felt new power flowing. They enjoyed peace of mind. Remember when everybody was flipping out during COVID? I didn't. Why? I had peace of mind. Now I'm not saying I'm better than anybody. I just said, you know what? I can't be involved. I'm going to stick close to him. I'm going to perform his work well. I enjoyed peace of mind. I discovered I could face life successfully. And we all have had that experience. I'm going to give you know a parable. How do you say mushle in, in English? A parable? Okay, so anyway, I'm going to give you an example. I'm trying to get a ship into this harbor. So right? an my, analogy. Yeah, my, an al oh, analogy, right. Okay, so I'm trying to get my ship into this harbor, and I keep going over here. I want to show up at your wedding, right? But I wind up getting drunk and, and, and laying in the gutter. I want I want to be nice to my kids and I want to, you know, be mean to them. I want to, you know, complete my degree and I wind up never getting. I could face life successfully means I want to come here and I'm able to do that. Not because I'm so great or because I went to a Tony Robbins seminar or because, you know, I even prayed real hard in, in church or, or temple. It's because I let God do the do the work. Right. That's what happened. I faced life successfully. I woke up. I had some things that I'm going to stay close to him. I'm going to perform his work well. And I'm able to do that because that's what I consider to be a success. I'll tell you some miracles later if we have time. Just recently, and I don't mean like sea splitting miracles. I'm just saying like things that I couldn't handle myself and just worked out without me doing anything. As we became conscious of his presence, meaning God, the Almighty, whatever you could call her, her, it, you know, whatever the higher power we began to lose our fear of today tomorrow and the hereafter those are three big classes of fear and if they disappear how how great would your day be if you had no fear of today tomorrow the hereafter right well that's what these people experienced they wrote that they experienced that how they did it is the rest of the book right i'm reading two pages there's another 162 that you can and and the stories the stories are important by the way they don't in my opinion okay how i read the big book they don't have the force of the actual canon of the big book, right? The, uh, the first 100 came together and, and wrote, uh, and it hasn't been changed in the 80 years. Bill wrote most of it and they had editing. He actually said, you know what, you're being way crazy, heavy handed. Let's like tone it down a little bit or nobody's going to come to our meeting. Um, but the other ones, the stories, I'm, I'm a big, you know, page 417 guy. Nothing, absolutely nothing happens in God's world by mistake. Those are great. Read those, you know, see how they establish a relationship. Ask your sponsor. 
like a lot of people, you know, who are like seeking sponsorship, challenge your sponsor. What does God mean to you? If they don't have an answer, get another sponsor. I, I, I'm not, I mean, like, it's just, you know, if you go into the gym and you say, you know, dude, how, how did you get buff? And he doesn't under, he doesn't know how to tell you, then find somebody who does, you know, or dieting or, or how to graduate law school, whatever it is, find somebody who did it before you ask them what they did. Now, here's the big thing. Three words, right? Three great words. If you, if you still have your lipstick and you're writing on mirrors, we were reborn, right? I want to be reborn. I made a mess of my life. I want to have a good life. I need, there has to be a break. Just logically speaking, anything that is reborn has first died. That's just English, right? You know, I'm not here to teach you English, but trust me on this. So all the things that I, all the past regrets, all the times that I failed my parents, all the, you know, the overspending that I did, all the things I did, all the girl, I, I did my four step, right? 48 different relationships. Right, that I had to make amends on, right? Whatever, but they were all the same girl, just different hairstyles. And and the, and the thing is that, like, I know this about myself, but I don't have to. I don't have to live in that past. I don't have to live with those regrets. I don't have to live with those. With I can give it away, right? I had the unique experience recently. I have a, a friend who's also a rabbi, and he um, he asked me before Rosh Hashanah, which is our holiday now. He was like, oh, you know, this big book stuff, this recovery stuff, could you tell me some insights so that I can use it in my own, you know, approach to Judaism? And it gave me a fresh perspective to talk to somebody who knows nothing about nothing. Part of the problem here is, is, isn't so much teaching people or, or, you know, getting people out there. It's undoing the bad information that we all get, right? Like, whatever, I'll get up on my soapbox later. But, but the thing is, there's a lot of bad information that goes around undoing it is is really important for me and so this guy didn't know anything about everything so i started to explain to him you know how i see it the problem the problem the solution this and that he doesn't suffer from a drinking problem he suffers from from something else that he wants to stop doing and so i said okay fine see the bitterness of of how bad things got for you you know he has his relationship problems in his in his uh marriage see feel the pain go into go into the shul or whatever and like you know hammer yourself for all the things that uh that you're sorry about so that you can feel this thing and it'll give you the motivation to go forward. Find a relationship with God. I showed him these pages, you know, you pick one. You want a director, you want a father, you want a principal, you want an employer, right? He, he, he liked the father model. And right? cause that's, you know, what they, that's the word that they use often in, in, in Judaic studies. Right. And, and, uh, you know, I let him loose. And I, you know, I told him the things, the mechanics, right. You know, I'll follow up with him. Maybe he'll do an effective four step. Maybe you want to read it to somebody, you know, making amends, whatever. That's his business. You know, I just gave him the information because I'm friends with him. He doesn't have a gun in his head, you know, so he, he doesn't have the same motivation that I do to, to, to you know, take hold of this stuff. And I look at it as like, you know, if you understand legal structure, sometimes there's a, there's a the, you know, the pronouncement from the judge, you're, you're going to jail for 10 years, but it's a suspended sentence. If you mess up again, then you, this first sentence gets activated. I think that that's what's happened for me, right? Really, and and this was actually what a woman told me, uh, not a woman, um, the director of the rehab that I went through in 1996, tiny woman, four foot 10, you know, 105, soaking wet with a brick in her hand, right? Jewish lady, okay? And I was, I was arguing with her because she wouldn't let me do something I wanted to do, right? You know, this is my life story in a nutshell. But, he, you know, here I am. I'm trying to, I, I, here's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, I wanted to fly to New York. I'm in rehab, right? This is 1996. I'm in rehab. I wanted to fly to New York to go to my friend's graduation and then come back to the rehab and pretend like, you know, everything's okay. And she wouldn't let me. She's like, that's not the way it works. She, she's like, you can leave. You just can't come back. And I was like, that's not fair. She stood up, okay? It, it was marginal difference between her sitting and now standing but she said you should thank god that life ain't fair because if life were fair joseph you'd be dead or in jail and i was like what right and then she went she went on actually made me feel bad because she said if life were really fair you'd be made to feel as terrible as how you've made other people feel whatever that's a different story different time shout out harry rosetto if anybody knows who that is she's the director of the the rehab that i came through anyway I'm going far afield, but let's just let's summarize right here. And the next thing that comes in the big book is the third step prayer, which we're going to read at the end. But the thing is that like God of our understanding, understanding relationship. Uh, there is a God. I'm not him. 
I'm going to ask him for help, right? It's a clever three-step thing. There is a God. I'm not him. I'm going to ask him for help, okay? Then, you know, decide what you want the relationship to be. Even my first sponsor, he was like, he was not the way I am. I'm very logical. He was a yoga guy. I, it was accidentally that I got paired up with him. If, you, if I had chosen, I totally would have not got this guy. But he, 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 but anyway, I got paired up with him because that's how they did it in the rehab. They just assigned you somebody. He's a yoga guy. He takes me out into the woods. And I mean, like, uh, this doesn't get creepy. It, was, it wasn't the, the woods. It was like a nice peaceful area. And he's like, okay, decide like what your God looks like. And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, well, come up with some ideas about, you know, the God that, that you would want to relate to. So I came up with fair. I came up with, you know, giving, loving, uh, non-judgmental. And one of the, one of the things that I put in, on that day was funny. I said, I think God would be funny. Right. I, I have a good sense of humor. I think anyway, you know, people could differ, but uh, yeah, I think I, would, and, and since that day, so this is 27 years ago, there are like things that come into the day that only I get to see that are hysterical to me. And I really believe that it's because my funny God sends me things that I get to laugh about. I don't mean just television shows and movies or whatever. I mean like a person who's arrogant, slipping in the mud, that kind of thing. And I'm like, Oh yeah, he's arrogant. He slips in the mud. It's hysterical to me. And sometimes even me, right? You know, I want to like go posh and cool, whatever. I put a pen in my pocket and it leaks and I'm the only one who doesn't know it. That kind of thing. I can laugh at myself. It's funny. You know, I don't take myself so seriously. All right. So that's basically it. Get the relationship clear. Anybody who has this sponsor here, you're looking for sponsorship or whatever, go to your sponsor and just say, can you explain to me how you relate to God? I heard this crazy guy, Joseph, at a meeting and he said, you know, the whole thing is about relationships. Can you explain to me how you relate to God? Hopefully the sponsor will have an answer. I don't mean like a heavy handed God is the author of the universe. And this. And I'm, I'm talking about like, you know, that, that they'll say, oh, you know, I rely on God to take care of my troubles. I try and stay out of the way, whatever it is. All right. I think I'm coming to the end of the time. I'm not eager to stop, but I think there might be questions or something. So I'll let you run it, Karen. I'm ending right now. Page 62, page 63. I'll put my number in the chat or Karen will. You can get in touch with me if you want to hear more about this. I'm glad you joined us and I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. Amazing. Thank you, Joseph. Can you go ahead and put your number in the chat? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. No problem. I'm just about to put my number in the chat. If um, you have enjoyed this experience, enjoyed Joseph's share as much as I have, and we're, we're only just getting started, party people. Um, or you feel like you also have a message that you want to get out there. Or you've been in rooms and seen lame recovery and you want to step it up a notch. You know, here, here is your virtual soapbox. Um, you know, reach out to me, go to the Rego 12 website, upload a speaker share on the speak pipe. So I've got the million dollar question for you here, Joseph. And oh wow, okay. I don't know, I don't know if this is something you struggle with. Um I'll let I'll let you share on that. Um, but um I know a lot of fellows, present company included, struggle with. With this relationship, and many of us, you know, my, my forte is working with uh, religious Jewish women of different stripes all around the world in recovery. So I, I have this God of my understanding. I'm, I'm actually observant. I pray formally. I pray informally many times throughout the day. But like the thinking, you know, we say alcoholism centers in the mind. Yeah. And I, when, I, when I'm real honest, which is a re- requirement of this program right oh okay she froze oh okay all right uh, um all right you know what karen had a question does anybody else have a question raise your hand i think i have the ability to call on you okay you're, it's Hi, your Joseph, floor. i heard you thank you i just wanted to thank you i hope karen comes back on soon uh i'm yeah it was just very powerful thank you so much for sharing oh you're welcome that's it? That's all you got? All right. I okay. know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't I, I just I'm still it's processing. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm fine. It's it's a, it took me a long no, time, you know, trust you. My biggest takeaway I would say is I don't even know who's here and how many people are here, so hi to everybody. But um my biggest takeaway is like you were saying something about when we just worry about working for God and like being a servant. I don't remember verbatim what you said because I didn't have lipstick or the mirror near me at the time. Oh yeah. But but like 
like you were saying, like everything else is gravy from there. Everything else melts okay, away. Okay, I'll stop you. I understand so your powerful. question. Okay, yeah. fine. We'll Not go a with question, okay. just comment. But yeah, go for it. All right. Here. Here's what here's what I was saying. It's in the it's in the book. I'm just reading from the book, right? If if it seems like I'm smart, it, I mean, you know, I, I'm more like just focused on the book. I've read it and I it it rolls off my lips because I'm involved in it. Anybody who's involved in like comic books or movies or you know tv shows they know the lines because they watch the episode i read the book so many times and just you know like i know what's going on but anyway it says we had a new employer right and uh, you know i'm quoting it even though i'm not reading from it we had a new employer being all powerful he took care of whatever i needed great that that sounds like a great relationship but there's an if there if right nobody but, so now it's telling me what i need to do stay close to him perform his work well. Those things need to be defined, okay? But that's the basic. Stay close to him. I believe that that means prayer and meditation, okay? To to call out to God, here are the things I need or here are the things I want, here are the things I'm struggling with. Perform his work well means get up and be on time for work. Take care of his other peeps, right? That's important. I get up and I send out a bunch of hello messages and good morning messages and whatever. I'm not interested in building self-esteem. I'm not interested in, you know, like having other people like me. I'm interested in another person looking at their phone and saying, hey, you know what? Somebody's saying hello to me. Yeah, that's nice. I get responses, which is nice. Sometimes I don't get responses. I don't hold them accountable if they don't reply. I have this thing in my life, okay? I'm telling you what I do, but figure out your own thing. I, I, have, I was a photographer back in Los Angeles. And I realized recently that all the f photos I ever took and put on my computer uploaded to the cloud. I went and I looked and I have 45,000 photos. Now, what I went and did is I went and found people of that I did bar mitzvahs for, I did a bris for a wedding or whatever. And I started sending them out on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I say, way back Wednesday, row back Thursday, flashback Friday. And I send them pictures of their kid who's now you know 10 years later right so i send them a picture of their bar mitzvah and now they're like oh, oh he's driving now and thank you so much and it's amazing can i get more whatever it is now some people write back to me you made my day now i'm not going to get into their business that like that made their day okay fine what's going on over there but but if if i made their day or I contributed somehow that means that God's going to be pleased with me. If it's God's pleased with me, then he's going to send me money and friends and, you know, opportunities. That's just, that's been my experience, you know? So anyway, if you, if you're, if you have the ability to stay close to him, perform his work well, prayer, meditation, and to do for others, in my opinion, or, or even within the recovery world, perform his work well, are you sponsoring? Anybody who's had a spiritual experience? If you're claiming that you've completed the 12 steps, I'm going to ask you, just like my friend Nikki, who's a lot more vocal and intense than I am. Excuse me, madam. Are you currently sponsoring? This is how she, she does it. And people will say no. And say, well, you said you told me you did all 12 steps. One of them is to, you know, is to carry as much as other alcoholics. Why aren't you doing that? And you didn't do all 12 steps. I don't come off that intense. I just have a different style. But the reality is, do you know, if I'm staying close and performing his work well, sponsorship, speaking at meetings, Karen asked me to do this. It's a great pleasure to do it, right? But it's also, you know, I'm performing his work well, I think. You know, and I mean, I get a check mark there or whatever. And the other well, the problems... And, and, and of oh, course, yes. I'm back. Hi, everybody on my oh, yeah, phone. Yeah, sure. A funny background. Uh, I, my computer just died as I was asking the okay. question. Um, and of course, you know, that's Joseph O's insurance policy just for today for his own recovery, right? Like you just said, like Nikki always says, this is a 12 step program. This is my step 12. Right. This is Joseph O's step 12. This is, you know, this is where I send the bar mitzvah picture to myself and I make sure that I have the best day ever. And Joseph O is sending the, you know, the wedding picture to himself and giving himself his own good day. Cause he knows why we don't know. We don't, we don't understand the workings of this, this book and, and its magical effect. But we felt it, so we keep doing it. Every time when we suit up and show up and do our step 12, our, our day gets better. Um, Joseph, you don't mind, I want to go back to the, the question that, that got cut off. And and if, if, if the God of my understanding will cut me off again, I'll know that it doesn't need to be asked here. What about people who have, um, you know, they believe in God, they're not agnostic, they're not having issues around Can I that. stop you for a second? I feel God Karen. hates them. Yes. Karen, wait. 
I'm not big on the theoretical questions. What about, you know, what about these people? You know, you know what I mean? Like, tell me something from your experience. Yeah, I don't, no, I, don't, I am talking about myself. I am talking about myself and my sponsors. How do you relate to these people? Were they a sponsor or I, something? No, no. Hold, so hold on. I'll ask the question. No, I'm talking about myself and my sponsors. What do I uh-huh. do when I know my problem centers in my mind? I have a thinking problem. I don't always think and I don't always feel that God really loves me. Sometimes, like the other day, I was walking in the Western Wall and I had a spiritual experience and I'm like, I'm an exclusive relationship with God. And I was just, I was there. I was in the zone. But sometimes I'm like, you know, I'm the cookie that got burnt on the assembly line or, or the, you know, or I'm the, right. the wicked that, you know, like sometimes okay. you know, I don't know if it's a thinking thing or it's a heart thing of like really feeling that my past is my greatest asset. God is constantly doing for me. What do you do with people like me, whether they are friends in your God squad like me or sponsees? Because sponsees also told me I'm here. I hear the question. Got, okay, uh, a punitive God, right? We we all we, we all yeah. It's bad information. Again, like I said, the, the biggest challenge of Alcoholics Anonymous today isn't even to present information as much as undo bad information, right? And the, all that's bad information. Not all of what you said. Punitive God is. You have kids, Karen, right? And and you love them, and you love them if they're dirty or they're muddy or they pee their pants or they screwed up at school. You love them. Now you're just a human being. God's a billion, billion, billion times more. I when I have thoughts like that, that I, that I'm not enough, that I screwed up, this and that. That's my sister talking, you know. And I don't mean my actual. I mean it is with my. It's with voices from my childhood, you know. When I came home with a bad grade on a test or whatever it is, that all got. I have to undo that. I had to say, you know what? That was bad information. What does God want from me? What does God want from me today? No surprise. What I'm about to say. Stay close to him and perform his work well. That's it. And if I do that, that is self-esteem for me. All the other stuff about I screwed up or this or that, that that all can be addressed through the immense process and stuff like that. But like I told you, it says three words. We were reborn. That means that literally I'm not that same guy. I had an experience when I buried my father, right, that he um, – I had to pack up his stuff, okay? And – so I'm folding his clothes. My, my mom was distraught, whatever. So I'm up in his room in his, you know, and I'm putting away his stuff. And I'm saying to myself, I'm, I'm boxing up his stuff. I, you know, I, I, I have kind of a relationship to the things, but my dad was the person who wore those clothes or had that wallet or whatever it is. I saw a separation between me and the actual, the person who wore those clothes. And that's how I viewed it, view it today. Somebody wrote something in a chat, which I had a big disagreement with. She said, how do you deal with the, 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 the necessary pain, discomfort, and, and regret that comes from doing a fourth step? I said, I don't have that, and my sponsees don't have that because we do a good third step. That's it. You do a third step, you're reborn, you write a fourth step about some other person. Now you're saying that's say, crazy Say what talk. you mean by that, I do a good third step. Say what I, that means you know, it's a foundational. You. It's a foundational third step. It says it's it said I have to have it I I have to have a new employer. I have to have a new God in my life. He's the authority. I'm his child, whatever it is. And he says, I'm reborn. So I'm gonna write a four step about some other person. Literally. Chronologically, yes, I was there. I did those things, but I'm not that guy. I, I'm I don't act that way, I don't think that way, I don't do those things. I have to make amends for the for what was done there. What was done there? But I'm not. But I don't own those things like like a cloth today. Now, people who don't, if somebody walked up to me and said, "Joseph, you're a liar, a cheat, and a thief," I can answer honestly and say, "I have lied, I have cheated, I have stolen, but I cleaned up my messes and I didn't today." Can you say the same? You say that to somebody. If you say that to somebody today, they'll freak out because that. But that's my life. I went and I cleaned up those things, and I don't do it today. I stay close to him. I perform his work well. That's really what it boils down to. So, Karen, I'm, I'm I'm trying to answer your question roundaboutly. When when you feel the 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 connection to God and everything like that, that that's that's the state that we should be in. The one that we were born with. When you see a little baby, you know that's the one that they're enjoying. When they play with all stuff and everything like that, we should all have that. I'll give everyone a blessing. You should have the simcha sechaim, the joy of life that a little child has. Something happened, and we became our our, peop, our way today. We got a lot of bad information. 
we don't do that. We can't think like that. It's not, it's not, uh, I'm not, I don't deserve to enjoy life, whatever it is. It's all bad information. You know, I push back on it. I say, that's not what my God wants for me. No, thank you. When people try and tell me that, that I'm enjoying life too much, I say, okay, <laughs> you know, I, you know, that, that's my experience. This is what I do. You know, I have, I, I sometimes think I have a Noah experience, Noah, the guy with the ark, right? If I was Noah, I would have a big, you know, banner that said, good luck with your plan. And that's, that is kind of what I say to a lot of people who come to recovery and say, like, you're doing it wrong, Joseph, you shouldn't be saying that, you know, people who are doing the four step are supposed to say, I don't know, I, no one ever told me that it doesn't even say that in the book. I don't know where they're getting their information from, you know, and that's it. And again, I'm not, I'm not here to educate the world, to correct anybody, to say anything. I'm just telling you how it is for me. I stay close to him. I perform his work while I read from the book. And the third step prayer, which we're going to read in a moment, it, it, there's such meat there. And Karen, that, that isn't answering your question. An effective third step. If you're having a problem with your sponsees, if they're coming along and telling you that they messed up or they did this or they're surfing Facebook at work and got caught, and now they're going to get fired or whatever it is, where's your third step? Why were you doing that? You got a new employer. You know, of course, you know what I mean? Of course you're going to feel guilty. Oh, come on. But is that realistic? I mean, people, you know, even the big book says that, you know, there will be, you know, trials and low spots ahead. I mean, we're not, we're not perfect saints, you know? Again, again Karen, you know? I, I'm literally going to repeat what I just said. If I was Noah, I would put on my, I would say, good luck with your plan. Everything that you just said is not a reality I buy into. I, I don't. So you think I, people done the first, third step, they're perfect? I'm not people, they wait, never stop, 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 stop. Not people. Are you talking about you? No, even a sponsee or, or, or fellows, they're constantly being tempted, having issues. Life is full of issues. Tempted, what, yeah. The third Not, steps, they're... But tempted, I understand. Tempted, yeah. And if they screw up, fine. Let's look at what happened to lead them there. And it's, the problem is the third step. How I act today, when I wake up in the morning, I say my third step prayer. I look at page 63. My obligation today is to stay close to him and perform his work well. When I deviate from that and feel terrible about myself, that's the problem. Go back to the third step. I send I send guys back to the third step. They're on the eighth step and this and that, and they're balking at making amends and this and that. I said, you're going back to the third step. That's it. Not because I'm punitive, because there's something off there. If you're building a building and the, and the foundation sucks, you don't keep going. If you keep going, then you've got, then you've got, it's going to collapse. And when it collapses, you're going to throw, oh, I didn't know. Yeah, you did. It's the same thing today. Third step, stay close to and perform his work well. If I'm at, if I'm at the office, okay, and, I, and you know, I'm, I'm going to go surf Facebook or this and that, I say, is this something that I want to be doing now? Because God's watching. If, and if I'm, if I'm going to cheat my employer, if I'm going to, if I'm going to, you know, make a, a terrible day, if I'm going to share my, you know, truth with somebody else and make them feel bad or something like that. God's watching and I don't get blessings on the back end. But when I, when I, when I go, when I, when I go through and I succeed, then I do get the blessings on the back end. Things tend to work out and I'm grateful for that. I'm, I understand Karen. And I get what you're saying. You, you make a valid I mean, this point. Is what we have 10, 11, 10 and 11 for, right. For mm -hmm. when we mess up, we review, we have a chance to kind of work this actively day in, day out. No of course. Correct. That's it. Or yeah, it's true. It, but course correcting you know with what a I'm bad, saying? What I'm saying is like, I understand. You're not I, saying yes. this one and done. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. Yeah. Step three isn't like one and done, you know, like I do it, you know, I have to like do my, my daily review, my morning meditation to, to stay on track consistently for the rest of my life now. I don't know about the rest of my life. It's a one day at a time program. Stop, stop getting involved in things that haven't happened yet. But the reality is if, okay, look, if I'm gonna, if I know this is step ten, continue to take personal inventory and and promptly admit it. If I don't have a good step three, I don't know where I screwed up. I could I could write stuff down all day, right? But I won't even know that I harm people because I didn't do an effective third step. That's the thing. These people that write all these gratitude lists and this and that, whatever. And I ask them, you know, okay, great. You're grateful for, for you're grateful that you have a relationship with your mom. Did you call her today? No. Right. So, so what are they doing? They're, they're great. They're, grad, somebody explained to me, OK, it's maybe a little bit too uh, you know, graphic. Gra gratitude without appreciation is like peeing in your pants. It's a warm feeling only you know about. If you want to have gratitude and turn it into appreciation, call the people you're grateful to have in your life. If you're grateful to be sober today, show it. 
go out and pass the message to somebody else. If you're grateful to have money in your pocket, help somebody else out with it. If you're not doing that, then back to step three. To Melanie's question, Joseph, are you suggesting, suggesting that when you did your step three, like you got your new role and, and you're good, you're done, your, your sponsors no. are, they're good. Okay. I'm not saying any of what just came out of your mouth. I do step three every day. I have to recalibrate every day. When you turn off your laptop, what has to happen before you can use it, Karen? Got to charge it. No, you got to reboot. Okay. Every single day I reboot. Every single day I write those things down. I, I, I stay close to my performance work all because yesterday I forgot. I forgot what happened yesterday. I reboot. Cool. Okay. I, so you're saying wait, step three every day. What you're, what you're saying about course correction and this and that, we've had this conversation before that's putting out fires. My thing is stopping the, stopping to get into trouble. Step three keeps me out of getting into trouble. The re, the re, okay, something happened, in, Alco something happened in Alcoholics Anonymous where like everybody thinks that like, you know, oh, my sponsor's a fireman, right? I get into trouble and then I call them and I say, how do I put out the fire? And that person got tricked into thinking that they're a fireman when in reality, they're an unpaid life coach. And they say to them, okay, fine, I'm going to help this guy today. And then he gets into trouble again, and, or he relapses, or he goes out of the, whatever it is. I hammer it out. I talk to my sponsees about it, and I say, you know, hey, how would you get into trouble in the first place? My sponsee tried to sell me on the idea that his wife was insane. Why, is he, why are you telling me your wife's insane? Because I came home late, and she flipped out at me. Okay, fine. So you came home late, she flipped out on you. Great. Did you call her? No. I didn't call her to tell her I'd be late. Okay. Has it happened before? Yes. Third thing, has she told you she disapproves of the fact when you come home late? Yes. So you went and did whatever the hell you want to do, and now you're going to tell me that your wife, your, your wife is insane. And you, and the thing is, what he would have done if he didn't have me was go and find other people that agree with him. And that's how we choose to live. I went and told him the truth, and I said, look, you screwed up. You didn't have a good third step. To stay close to him, perform his work well, means calling your wife and saying, hey, honey, I'm going to be late. Or whatever, remembering people's birthdays. You know, uh, if you got a friend, yeah, remember yeah. their birthday. I get that. I get that. Like, well, Melanie's been waiting a while. Did she write a oh, question? Oh yeah, she's not typing her question in the chat. Can she just talk for a moment? Um, are you able to enable her to have sound? We don't usually do that. Yeah. The questions are type, but if you want to try and enable, her I don't. To I don't mind as long as she's cool with it. Okay, Melanie, talk. Hi, Joseph. Thank you. Yeah, I, I did put my question in the chat. I'd, I'd like to know, Joseph, um, how long did it take you to find your higher power? And, and thank you so much for your your um, experience and strength. Okay. And hope. Really I mean, it. that's that's a personal question. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll answer. But I didn't I didn't have to go find a higher power. He's always there. Like, how long did it take you to find oxygen? Right. It, it, it was always there. Right? Just somebody eventually told you, hey, it's oxygen. You know, the, the joke, the two fish, right? They're, they're floating along, you know, and they're like, hey, you know, okay, fine. And we're swimming along. And the third guy says, the well, water's fine today, right? And then swims off. And fish one says to fish two, what's water? They didn't even know the thing that's sustaining them and, and their life that they're floating in and moved in since the day they were born was water. I don't know what, I, it wasn't, God was always there. And one of the promises, okay, I don't know where people are in their experience or how well they read the book. One of the promises are that I, I'll suddenly realize that God is doing for me what I couldn't do for myself, right? Sounds familiar. They read promises, right? It's not that God started doing something for me. It's that my realization was sudden. He was always doing for me. He was the entity that stopped me from running over a child and I would be in jail right now. There's no good reason why I'm, the amount of times that I drove drunk, or fell down the stairs drunk. I should be paralyzed or in jail. Harry Rosetta was right. If life were really fair, I should be drunk. I should be um, I should be dead or in jail. Dead. <laughs> dead. <laughs> yeah, dead or in jail. No, dead dead is even dead dead would dead, dead I don't I, I, trust me, death, death doesn't scare me so much. I don't I don't think any alcoholics really scared of death. That's why I went in health class when I was in eighth grade and they came in and showed me a diseased liver. It didn't stop me from drinking. I don't care. It's not going to happen to me. That's what I said to myself. It normal people would stop. Or uh, before before Halloween every year, they put a, a wrecked car in front of a high school and say, you know, don't drink and drive, right? So normies don't. But I, I, it, it had no effect on me, right? But the but the thing is, what what my point is that like uh, the higher power is always there, just like the grid is always there. 
if you if the electric grid was there and you choose not to connect to it, then your appliances aren't going to work. God's always there. If you choose not to connect to Him, then your life will be not not a, a mess. But I mean, I don't know what you. It'll just be not not the thing that you want. And if you if you suffer like I do with, with you know moving towards addictions and you know obsessive thinking or whatever it is, if I'm not connected to the grid, I'm uh, I'm going back to your question, Karen. Every day I have to reboot this. I'm telling you. There, and, and as a, a Jewish rabbi or whatever, I'll tell you that's why the prayers are always the same in the book, and you read a sitter because it's just you got to reboot. And if and anybody who had computer problems, if your computer doesn't boot up properly, it doesn't work. If I don't boot up properly, I'm I'm a mess. My first sponsor yeah, told me I just got kicked off the meeting. My computer just stopped. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, you know, no, no. God, God, God doing for us exactly. But it, it, my my first sponsor, Robert, the yoga guy, he said, if the first three people that you meet in the morning are assholes, the problem is you. Now, how does how does that work? Right? You know, no, because because the, the likelihood of me meeting three terrible people in a row is, but the likelihood of me being all bent out of shape in my brain is is, and that's the thing. And I stop myself and I go to the third step prayer. Which is which is what we're going to read at the end here, you know. But that that's really the that's a source of my power. That's a source of my connection. I say it a bunch of times a day. I get screwed up. The but uh, yeah, I also live in a world where the buses are late and it rains on days that I'm supposed to go to the beach, and people don't talk nicely to me. I have a friend, you know, that I took to the and this happened in Los Angeles. I drove him to the airport at two o'clock in the morning so he could fly to New York, right? Because he was dating a girl, and he didn't thank me. Oh, he was running to the he was running to the plane. And I was like, are you kidding me? Right? I was hot. But the, but the thing is, my sobriety, and when I told my sponsor about it, he said, shut your mouth. <laughs> He's like, you know, because that, that, that stay close to him, perform his work well. It doesn't say anything about demanding a thank you from the friend that I drove. I live in a real world, I'm telling you. But when that happens, I have other people that I bounce things off of. I'm, I, I am knowledgeable and I have done research both in this big book, also in Judaism or whatever. And, and also I've been to business school. Okay. I have a lot of information that can be used for ill purpose. Imagine a wrecking crane. Okay. You know, those wrecking cranes that demolish buildings, very, very useful as long as they're used in the right way. It's really a bad story if there's a maniac in the cab. And that's, that's my life. If there's a maniac in the cab of my wrecking crane, then I'm destroying buildings all over the place. If I've got something that's interested in serving, then it works nicely with how, you know the city grid or whatever. That's what I have to watch out. If I'm experiencing a that's lot a of great like, visual, that's awesome. It's the truth, but but that's yeah, the yeah. thing is that I'm, I'm I'm open to feedback on this. If if my relationships are suffering, if I'm getting it when when I meet people and they and they inform me about their life a little bit, if they're in recovery or something like that, and they say like, oh, I have I have a brother and a sister and a brother I no longer talk to, it. It red flags me and says, like, do I want what this guy has? Now, okay, fine. It's drilling down on why or whatever. But the thing is, like, he's harboring this resentment. He's got a brother he doesn't talk to, this and that, whatever. And I say, like, you know what? That's not the program I want, you know? And it's not a sponsor-sponsor relationship. It's just, you know, I, I there are toxic people floating around. A lot of the bad information that you're going to hear. The people that tell you that, you know, you're powerless over people, places, and things. I ask them where they got that information, and they can't, they don't answer. It's not in the big book. It says empowers over alcohol, right? I don't know. I don't know where they came up with that. Empowers over people. With, I empower. I I can throw a brick through a window. I trust me. I have power over things, right? I, back in Los Angeles, I was the big boss. I could fire people at will. I had power over people. Yeah, I'm. I'm just telling you. What, why? Why is that important? I'm not. Again, I'm. I'm coming to correct bad information. Go back to I'm powerless over alcohol, therefore I shouldn't drink it. How do I stop drinking it? I need a higher power. Now I'm at step three. Then I got to do some writing, and then I research the other. It just flows. But when I get into all these things, yeah, you're muted, Karen. I think those of you on the call who are in other fellowships, Joseph said powerless over alcohol. Perhaps it goes without saying, but yeah, well, if you're in LA, powerless over chocolate cake. If you're a drama addict, powerless over drama emotionalism if you're well, i'll tell you to... stop for a second because the, the rabbi guy that i was working with who wanted to know i had to put it in his terms because he's not powerless over alcohol he does drink or whatever and he's not you know i said okay you're powerless over your first thought that i am the first thought that pops in my head the one that says this guy owes me an apology this guy owes me a thanks i have no i have no defense against 
It's true. The one that tells me also maybe I'm drink. They, I got, it's a good idea to call your ex girlfriend on her birthday, right? That thought that pops. In, no, it's not, right? But it pops into my head. I have no power against that. My second thought comes from a program where it's been ingrained in me that I turn around and I can do something about it. So if 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 the people that are coming on here, out that's alcoholism. The, the ISM, it's a mental mind disease. It manifests as like internet addiction. It manifests as um, gambling addiction. It manifests as overeating or whatever. I have a friend back in Los Angeles that asked me, he said, you know, I, I know you got time in the program, whatever. He's suffering from, from, you know, an eating addiction. And he said, you know, he had a bad day at work and this and that. And he came home and he ate a, a pint of haagen And I said, oh, wow. That, I said, that's a, that's a real problem. I said, you need to find the guy who put the haagen in your freezer and kick his ass. He said, but I put that there. I said, of course you did. And that's the problem, right? What did you think was going to happen? You're going to spin the wheel every day of, you know, what the wheel of misfortune. And eventually you're going to go a week not eating a hog and and then you're going to. And then you're going to tell me that you got an eating problem. No, you, you, you got, you know, you got a mental problem. I, I wasn't that harsh with him. But the thing is that that really is that really is our issue, you know. And if you're calling an ex-girlfriend or you're getting into relationships or whatever, that's obvious to everybody that you shouldn't be in, right? Then why aren't you asking them? Why aren't you listening yes, to them? Yes. Or if you're, you know, it's a holiday here in Israel. If I know I'm going to be moody in the morning, if I go to bed too late, I can't go to bed too late, right? If I need my morning routine for my recovery and my sanity, then right. the I can't reality is you're over eighteen. You can do whatever I can't you want. Go walk around partying. And expect to be chipper in, in, in the morning. Well, you can. It's just called insanity, you know. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. Until proven wrong again. And and then we straight we straighten out on these spiritual lines. Joseph, thank you so much for your share and your wisdom. Right. And it was even fun duking it out with you here. Thanks for that opportunity and privilege. Thank you for being a, a an amazing servant of this fellowship. Again, Joseph, oh, maybe you could put your number in the chat if any of you guys are not already in touch with Joseph. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. Reach out to him. You can reach out to me. You know where to find us. And uh, with that heartfelt appreciation, will you please pray us out? Sure. Yeah. So what I've chosen is what comes next in the big book from what we were reading. We get to our third step, right? You know, we we realize we're suffering. Then we find, you know, came to believe how great in ourselves could restore our sanity. Now at the third step, I just told you it's about the relationships, about our understanding is not understanding the totality of God. Now we're at a third step. Now a third step prayer, which hammers it home, which is what you know, I was telling Karen, as opposed to like all the things about cleaning up our messes. The way to stay out of trouble is access this prayer. God, I offer myself to thee. To build with me, to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. And I tell I tell my sponsees this. I think it's a clever phrase. May I do thy will always isn't just for crochet pillows or putting on your wall. It actually means something. Right? May I do thy will always means I'm not going to serve Facebook at work. All right. That's it. What do I do now, Karen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Awkward. Oh, Karen Just left. kidding. Oh. That was on mute. It was amazing. You guys missed out. That's it. Now, oh. um, take two. Um, so with that, you'll, you'll third step prayer. Yeah, can, you tell, can you tell people what's going on next week? Is there, do you have a speaker booked or something? What's Is there going, going to be something? Week? Where we're on every other week. So um, in two right. weeks, um, we will have another podcast. Um, I, I'm thinking. Oh, and I this is going to be recorded and placed somewhere? How do they get yeah. access? Yes, okay. this is. Uh, this podcast is recorded. Um, we'll have the link. We'll post it in the groups. Once uh, Justin has edited and put it up live in the Rico 12 groups and the Afro Euro groups and our Jerusalem groups. You'll be free to forward it on to your friends and family in recovery or anyone else who might benefit. And I pray for all of you that you pass this forward, that you do your 12 steps, including step 12, working with others, that you pray to God that you may do his will and that we may all have a beautiful day and do his will. Thank you, Joseph. And thank you, everybody. And join us again in two weeks, I think, uh, I might be hosting myself in two weeks because I've got a topic that's burning up inside me. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm.
Thank you all. Bye-bye. Stand